In this video trailer, we're going to look at how Sario spoofed the S&P 500 futures. Stay tuned. Hey traders and investors, a very warm welcome to you. So, flash crash, we know that Sario, who was trading from, I believe, his parents' bedroom in, or his bedroom in his parents' house in Hounslow, West London, was arrested and charged with causing the flash crash, or at least he was charged with spoofing the market. Let's have a look at exactly what he was doing. Let's look at some facts around the whole case. So. This is the S&P 500 book, it's the ES, it's the S&P 500 futures, it's one of the thickest contracts out there in terms of futures and they really will replicate the move of the market because they are the actual market. It's the index futures price and it's made up of the 500 stocks and but you can also trade it from a futures perspective. Not a lesson on futures but you get the idea. Right, so bid price, ask price. This is what a book would normally look like. You've got some levels on the ask, some levels on the bid. Here's your price, here's the volume coming in. Now, what Sario did is he created an algorithm. He had an algorithm designed for him that would place orders into the market on the sell side specifically, like he would place 900 here, he would place 900 here, and what would happen is as the market would get close, it would automatically cancel them. So he was spoofing like this for a year prior, but he was doing it manually. He was placing his orders manually, and then as the market got to them, he was pulling them away. Now, the theory behind spoofing is this. You're placing sell side orders, aggressive orders in here. If you're placing like 3,000 in here, I don't think he was doing as much as that, but let's say you did. Let's say you layered this book with a lot of sell side. People will look at this overhang of supply and think, oh, you know what, I need to sell this. I need to close my longs, I need to go short, and it will cause an artificial depression on price. Now, what happened? Well, you know what, the regulators don't even know what happened in the flash crash. There was a, another company that may have been caused it, but this guy's taken the blame for it, rightly or wrongly. Um, the point is, other algos may well have looked at this and thought, ah, we need to start selling, start selling, start selling. But going back to the story, he then created this algo, or got someone to create this algo for him, that would create an artificial illusion of price. It would cancel orders as soon as it got to them. So it was purely a spoofing algo. He didn't want to be filled by it. He just wanted to show size, to show that it looked weak, and then he would hopefully depress the price. It would get a push down, whether he was buying at the lows, it would pop back up, or whether he was short himself. Regardless, you're manipulating price or attempting to manipulate price. So you can see how if that order book now looked like this with big orders stacked on it, and that increased the ask size, it would look much heavier and much more likely to go lower. So during the flash crash, Asario traded 62,077 lots of a notional value of 3.5 billion. He made 879K in profit. Like I said, he'd been spoofing for a year prior. And allegedly, the CME uh, rang him, or he rang them on the day of the flash crash, because they wrote to him and asked him what he was playing at, what he was doing, and kind of reminded of the rules of the exchanges. Hey, you know what, you can put an order in and change your mind, but when it starts becoming excessive and obvious that you're doing something you shouldn't be, you're going to get a letter and actually you're kind of starting to break the law now. Allegedly, he rang them and told them to kiss his ass. So whether or not it's true or not, I don't know. Um, he carried on spoofing after the crash. So after the flash crash had happened, for the next 12 days, he was still spoofing, which indicated he perhaps didn't think he'd done anything wrong. He perhaps thought that he was, or he thought he was in the clear, one or the other. He thought, I've done nothing wrong, I'm gonna carry on doing this, or he thought, no one's gonna catch me, I'm gonna carry on trading anyway. Just made nearly uh, you know, a million quid, a million dollars in profit, uh, but he's still spoofing away. Um, he was showing 900 lots at a time, and he was flashing on these big order sizes versus executing an average of seven. So that's one of the things they look at, they kind of say, well, you know, if you're flashing on seven and you're executing seven, you're probably okay because you're not really going to manipulate the market with seven and you're probably that's the order you want to get filled anyway so you're going to get filled similarly if you're flashing on orders of 900 and you're being filled quite regularly with 900 that's fine you know you're getting filled because you want the 900 but this is kind of becomes obvious he doesn't really want 900 he's been trading seven clips uh, a clip of seven should i say uh, and he's flashing on 900 mm, not the best thing All right at one point, he was 20 to 29% of the sell pressure. And also before the crash, allegedly, he 
he, his uh, spoofing orders equaled the total amount of buyers resting. So the amount of artificial offers he was putting on the ask side were the equivalent of the total amount of buyers stacked up. So that's how, two, uh, how one sided it was. Uh, he did 19,000 replace or cancel orders. In other words, he put 19,000 orders in that he didn't fill or he moved or he did something with them, which is quite a significant number. And you can see why he used an algo for that. Now, one thing I did notice is that allegedly Allegedly, according to the CME or the FBI, whoever's investigating it, this is kind of the flash crash. We did this and then we started to hammer, hammer lower. Sario's algo was only switched on here. He was only spoofing during this period of time. So whether that profit relates to him actually just day trading the short side here, does it relate to him spoofing it here? Who knows? The argument could be that the spoofing had nothing to do with the flash crash. And you know, as if you were gonna make your own judgment on that based on, on some of the data we've got here, was he big enough to be able to cause a flash crash? Did he help? Maybe it didn't help. Maybe things were already kind of on a knife edge. Maybe we've had a multitude of things like an algo going a little bit awry, people getting a bit concerned. Him then adding that pressure on, uh, did it cause a flash crash? But genuinely, you know, if someone had wanted to sell that amount, they would have moved that order around and done something with it. So there is that argument. But the main thing that I was, I was kind of saying here is that allegedly that was where he was running his spoofing algo. He turned it off. He wasn't running it during the actual crash itself. So make of that what you will. But anyway, regardless of that, Unfortunately, now he's been, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, he's been uh, arrested and charged with uh, something or other relating to this, whether it was some kind of offence with the spoofing, whether it was some kind of fraud or wire fraud. I don't know specifically, but anyway, unfortunately, that's the case for him. Unfortunately for him, or however you want to look at it. So those are the facts, guys. Made a bit of money out of that spoofing. That's exactly what he was doing, putting orders in, cancelling them as the market got to them, and creating an unusual illusion of selling pressure in the S&P 500 futures.